Hello everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. My name is Eduardo Langrafi. I'm a computer engineer with 18 years of experience in the telecommunication area. I actually started my career uh, working in a Japanese company, uh, NEC, and in 2010 I joined our company now, Netcon, and since then I've been in charge of managing Connect Master Sales and Deployments in the Americas. I would like to welcome the audience and also thank you for your time for our today's session in which we will be talking about the best practices for network inventory management. So thank you very much for being here and you feel free to ask questions uh, using the chat area of our of YouTube live. Okay, here is our agenda today. We will start by talking about how most companies currently manage the network inventory data and some of the negative impacts that can be overcome by consolidated inventory information, which is, by the way, our second topic here. Uh, well, once we decide to integrate the inventory information, you will have to understand what are the functional requirements or the functionalities that need to be covered by the platform that will be adopted. So this is our topic number three. And then we will explain how this integrated approach can assist the different areas within your organization responsible to manage the network in different stages. Uh, of the life cycle. So finally, we will have a live demo where you will be able to see some of the topics covered in our presentation. So again, you can send us questions using the chat area and our team will be answering your questions uh, during the session also using the chat area. Okay, so starting with our topics today, uh, Let's start by having a look on how many companies currently manage the inventory data. It's quite usual to face situations where the information is retained in the user's or technician's minds and no formal documentation process is in place, which will then lead to poor internal communication. And that also indicates immature processes in the company. You also have to deal with the problem of when the staff leaves the company and the information is lost, which will then require another field survey. So Excel spreadsheets are also largely used to manage network connections and closures, panels, as well as Microsoft Visual is applied to produce network drawings. The issue with these two is that they will require templates to be built from scratch it's also difficult to control the versions of the files. You're gonna have a lot of files and having the control of where those files will be stored. It's also a quite complex task. Um, and these tools also demand a lot of manual efforts to keep the data updated, making also more time consuming and difficult to share the information among the different areas. Oh, uh, beyond that, they also provide limited network visibility as each file shows only a portion of the network. So another common approach is the company trying to develop its own inventory system, generally based on relational database applications, which also implies in high cost to develop and maintain. Uh, produce all the documentation and training for your system. And in most of the cases, these tools will provide poor functionality and it's difficult also to handle. So another approach is having geo databases, geographical databases in place, which are mainly used during the planning stage, which also provides information only about the outside plan. So this is a negative side and no inside plant resources are covered. Uh, this will also lead to a poor or inexistent end-to-end -end circuit visibility. And finally, there are the network management systems. Um, each platform will cover uh, a specific product or product line. Uh, 
uh, this will also give me a um, limited network visibility and the lack of the um, infrastructure data. So in general terms, we have a scenario that requires huge amount of efforts and people to accomplish the daily activities in the organization. Well, this is the common scenario for network inventory management uh, currently carried out by many uh, ISPs and companies in, in the telecommunications market. So what are the impacts? So as a result, the network planning activities will be more time consuming, as we know, as it is mainly done manually. The planning accuracy is also compromised due to the multiple sources of information and lack of standardization of the project rules and materials, for instance. Uh, inefficiency in the planning stage also negatively impacts the construction in startup phases by adding extra delays, in many cases due to poor construction plans that do not bring all details required to carry out the field activities. So, these factors will also delay the revenue generation, affecting directly the business plan and consequently the relationship with investors and stakeholders. So when you finally um, build your network, so when your network is finally ready, uh, it's very important to make this as built information also available to other areas in the organization, such as the sales team, so they can start prospecting the customers and operations teams uh, that will maintain uh, the system and also answer to customers' uh, uh, complaints and so on. So in this case, we have also observed this long delay to answer customers' requests for, for new uh, service activation or even complaints about technical issue as the inventory information is largely spread among different sources. So this leads to higher network unavailability, damaging our company's image and customer satisfaction. So the bottom line is that the company will operate always maximizing costs, including uh, OPEX, CAPEX, as well as minimizing revenues and profit margins. So that's a very negative scenario for how um, a network should be managed by a telecom company. So, in order to overcome all these problems, we would like to suggest the integration and centralization of the network inventory data in a centralized and robust database uh, that also provides high performance. So, this database will then interface with a high technology application able to properly manage uh, the vast amount of inventory data and provide intelligent tools to different areas within the organization. So by means of this centralized interface, users will be capable to manage the information. Will be efficiently shared among the different areas, information flow and corporate process. So each area will also take automation tools and predefined data templates that, besides being fully customized to the needs of each area, also speed up the time required to accomplish the daily activities. So we have the planning, construction, sales, operation, and maintenance area taking advantage of this integrated approach, as well as other systems that will be linked together by the use of the flexible APIs, as we mentioned down here. So what should be then covered uh, in this integrated inventory platform that we are proposing? So let's see in this slides and the next one as well. So starting from the infrastructure, which also refer to as layer one in the OSI model, the platform must be able to manage the network locations, routes, poles, underground manholes and ducts, cables and connectivity devices along the routes, as well as support the different technologies such as optical fibers, coppers and radio systems. 
also besides the infrastructure that must be managed on an end-to-end -end basis the inventory system must be able to understand how these physical resources are being used by implementing the upper logical layers such as wdm power line ot and uh, technology sonnet pdh ip vlan mpls ethernet and gpom technology so your inventory platform should also be capable to cover layers two and three of the osi model so your system should then include all these three layers and at the end the platform will then enable end-to-end -end circuit view which is quite important during the planning activation and operation stage so here we can see how the information is modeled within the inventory system. So considering the vast amount of vendors and technologies available, it is really crucial that this system must cope with the ever-changing environment. So the inventory platform must provide a comprehensive approach to existing technologies as also observed in the previous slide and allows the flexible modeling of different network components from different industry vendors. So users must be able to add new components to the system library following simple predefined steps in order to deal with the ever-changing scenario and fast expansions observed in the telecom market. So being around for over 20 years and have experienced different requirements and market segments has led to a highly flexible and configured platform which is a uh, connect master software and we will be seeing more in the demo at the end of these slides so also another quite relevant aspect of the inventory system it's the ability to integrate with other mapping standards commonly used by the telecom industry. So one feature that allows simple and native integration with other systems is the adoption of a GIS database. In our case, it's Oracle Special. So this technology enables the coexistence of different mapping systems without the need for data conversion or import and network planning data carried out in other platforms such as AutoCAD or ArcGIS can be natively absorbed by Connect Master, which can by its turn add the additional data such as connectivity and circuit usage. So information that are required by other areas and stages of the network deployment. Of course, the inventory system must be complemented and interact with other systems commonly used by the telecom industry. So this approach allows companies to choose the best and most suitable platform for each business process, maximizing the functionalities of the overall systems environment. It's also important to note that the inventory system is the data source foundation and must integrate with other platforms by using the flexible APIs and some of these integrations can be bi-directional as it is the case for the trouble ticket system CRM or billing system workforce and provisioning but also unidirectional as exemplified by the NMS and EMS platforms here in the picture which allow periodic uh, data reconciliation and synchronization. So the system must interact with your network management platforms to make sure that all data will be updated in Connect Master or in your inventory system. So now that we saw a bit about um, uh, the inventory system, how we should uh, design our platform, the features that it should have, um, the layers that should be covered in technologies. Let's talk a little bit about important functionalities for the network life cycle management. So we got here five main areas, planning, uh, construction, sales and operations and maintenance, which in somehow is part of operations and each area requires different information 
and different tools to accomplish its uh, daily activities. So when we talk about the planning area, they need to design, so they will need a reliable mapping source, uh, also tools to automate the network design, provides engineering validation. One example is the power budget that can uh, should be automatically provided by your design tool. Um, also, uh, once you are designing your network, you plan to build it sometime in the future. So all these construction plans should be also provided by the tool, as well as the bill of materials and costs uh, for the planet network. So then you can uh, approve uh, constructions. So when we go uh, to the construction phase, um, the field team that will carry out the field activities for implementation, network, uh, installation, they need to have comprehensive plans, work orders, um, connectivity reports of how they should splice cables, how they should connect fibers, um, not only fibers, but all other infrastructures as well. Um, also capabilities to manage the project implementation that uh, means uh, knowing who is doing each activity who is responsible when each of the activities should take place and so these are important features um, that should be supported to allow the proper construction of your network as well as data that will enable the network commissioning well once your network is built, then comes uh, the best part for the uh, stakeholders or investors, which is the sale. So it's time to start seeing the resources or the revenues coming in. So all this, this data should then be available for the sales team to be able to respond to uh, customer demands, also prospect uh, customers. Uh, and, and also do the research reservation for the customers, generate statistics and see where they can uh, invest more efforts to sell uh, services, also uh, manage the, the, the possible services that can be offered to your customer and manage the customer data, okay? We are gonna be seeing uh, a little bit more details on this activities, I think, in the next slides where I'm going to detail each one of them and how we can provide uh, these tools. Uh, now talking about operation, uh, the physical and logical inventory, end-to-end -end circuit view, uh, which is very important for maintenance or for operations uh, purposes. Capacity management, power management, auto routing functions, these are some important um, functionalities required for uh, the NOC team, the Network Operations Center teams. Uh, and the maintenance functions are also quite important. So then you can keep your network availability high. So, and then in this case, uh, you need to have tools that allows the fault simulation. So you can see what's gonna happen if a fiber breaks uh, in a specific location of, of this equipment goes down you can see what are going to be the customers and services affected. Also locate failure, um, also maintenance events. So manage all the maintenance events, the equipments that are going out for repair um, and maintain um, good customer communication. So this is important. So your inventory tool should also um, preferably cover all these uh, functionalities to support the network lifecycle management. And we're gonna see that more in details now, and I'm gonna show you also a bit of this uh, during the live demo. So when we talk about the uh, inside plan, so, and then let's take the planning side of it and, and have a look in more detail. So we need to have a common library for records uh, management or for network design. So what are the available network elements? What are the resources available? Then you also need to be able to design. Uh, now we are looking at the inside plan. So 
the horizontal cable. So when you see a data center, you should be able to manage the, the floor layout and the horizontal cabling, as well as the vertical cabling for a building. And then when you click on a specific rack, you should be able to see all its components, uh, including panels, the, what are active parts, uh, you know, all devices with all cards and ports. Uh, this should also be managed uh, by the tool. And when you design the inside plant, you should actually have these resources available, network elements, modules, and the parts, and manage all the connectivity that you have inside a data center, okay? Another aspect which is also important is the power uh, management, and that's we are going to see um, a little bit more in the future. So when we talk about the outside plan, plan, planning, so we have here a, rela a reliable mapping source. This is really important so then engineers can design the network properly and have an accurate view of materials for, for your uh, network design. So it's very common that we find maps that are, are are out of scales, so then that will you know also requires uh, more efforts to adjust, as well as we provide the you know not realistic view of material. Also, it makes easier when you have predefined project rules, so then you know exactly the symbology is going to be the same for every um, type of resource. Uh, as well as you're going to create a standard nomenclature for the network objects. This will make much easier um, from the planning, the, the, the consequent um, steps such as constructions, operations, and maintenance. Also, design automation uh, is very important. So having the capability of creating rules and then see uh, the rules being applied automatically to build the network will save a lot of time. So this is also a key feature for outside plant planning. The engineering validation is uh, having, after you design your network, you should be able to see what are the attenuations, uh, expected attenuation. This will also help the commissioning, commissioning work during the construction phase. So, and preferably this should be um, automatically calculated so you don't need to do it in a separate spreadsheet as it is the case uh, in many companies. We have seen that a lot. And also as a result of the planning that including inside or outside plans, you should have a reliable view of materials uh, that will show you the costs materials costs and this will also help you to minimize capex by um, having accurate network designs so looking at the construction phase now we need to manage the project implementation so it's very important to have like a microsoft project um, tool also integrated so then from the design, you can already assign materials to tasks or activities that will be then carried out by different field engineers and companies. Also, these teams should have detailed construction plans. This is very important to mitigate uh, implementation errors, okay, that then will lead for more uh, costs in the future. Also, it's very important that they know how they should connect the objects and fields. So, um, how customers should be connected in the spreaders and how the spreaders should be connected, for instance, back to the POP in case we are talking about a GPO network, or for a splice enclosure, how fibers should be then spliced and connected. So, the more accurate and the more detail you give to your field, um, engineers, you know, the better the network will be constructed and, you know, you're going to save a lot of money in the future when you need to, you know, do some repair or, or do some maintenance works in your network. It's very important to start your network using the best practices. 
Okay, I also work orders, issuing work orders for the technicians so they know which fiber should be spliced and how they should be connected is also quite important and support commissioning and uh, the as build process. So after the network is built, we need to then um, come back to the design documentation and make every adjustments that are needed because this is going to be the basis of information that will be available for the other areas within your organization so it's quite important to make good work at the beginning so then the next phase will be much better so then uh, then once the network is built we need then then to start selling resources so the system should have a capability to rapidly uh, generate a sales via billet. So just by putting the address of a potential customer, um, the system should tell you where are the, the you know, the closest NAPs or network access points for, so you can connect your customer to that specific NAP. Once you define that that's the NAP you're gonna connect your customer, you should be able to do the reservation of that resource. So then the system should also allow you to do research reservation. Uh, very important also to generate statistics and KPIs. Uh, this will help you to drive your sales actions so where we should invest more efforts, the regions and areas uh, where we have uh, more ports available. So all that kind of statistics is quite important. So you ensure that you are, you know, generating the maximum revenue out of your installed network. And also being able to manage customer information. So as you're going to have all the resources that are being used by every customer in the tool, it's quite interesting that you also have the email, phone number, and some other information. So if you need to get in contact with your customer, you know, you can get that information very easily. Then we go to the operation uh, side. And so we have the consolidated topology overview. So a network, you know, is built based on connecting cables and wireless links. So then if you want to have a really a good view of how your topology looks like, system should be able to create a drawing for that. So you can see the cables, how cables and radio links and are connecting your different locations and resources. Also, uh, having outer routing uh, tools, it's quite important. So if you want to um, define a, a new path for a circuit, the system should automatically show you what are the best options. So let's suppose you have a network outage and you need to reroute a circuit so it's quite interesting when the system have uh, has the ability to tell you which uh, path should be used and what are the options and you can um, very easily generate a work order to implement uh, this new route so this is even for installation of uh, new customers new activations so the system tells you the best routes to reach your customers so this also helps to save materials um, during the implementation uh, and operation works. Capacity management, um, not only the physical capacity management, but also logical capacity management. So you know if you have, uh, you know, wavelengths available in specific fiber, if we're dealing with WDM systems, or if you are using solid uh, technology or OTN technologies, how many channels do I have available for new services? Or if it's a dark fiber, what I'm gonna use in that fiber. So having this capability to provide end-to-end -end view of the services, it's very important for operations and also maintenance purposes, right? And um, when we talk about telecom, it's, it's very important also to mention the, um, the power portion of it. So we are always concerned about the network element, what happens if it goes down, but what happens if the power uh, goes down? So then managing the electrical resources 
it's also very important so so then you know if you can install a new device if you can install a new rack in your data center how much of energy are you using how much energy or power your new rack is going to be uh, using in this um, room for instance so all that information preferably should also be managed by the inventory tool so it's quite important for operations and so we see the maintenance part of it so fiber location or fiber fault location if there is a fiber cut you know your system can and should be able to show where that fiber cut is and issue a report for maintenance purposes so not only that you can also see what are the affected customers and services so and you can do that for existing fault for a real fault or you can do that to you know uh, prepare for a preventive maintenance that you you know or a maintenance window that you you're gonna it's gonna require you to unplug on a specific device so you should be able to know who is going to be um, out of service and, and preferably communicate with your customer then so maintenance events um, what maintenance events we we have in the network we can click on an object and know exactly the history about the the maintenance repair orders are also important and this kind of repair orders can be even um you know visualized in mobile devices or also the history of your devices so and when we talk about history every change that is made to that component you should keep track of those changes so these are some important capabilities that your platform should have and with that we uh, will jump to the live demo of connect master So I'm bringing here Connect Master's main interface, maximize my screen. All right, so this is Connect Master's main interface. It's divided into three main areas. We have Explorer menu, we have the fast access area, and the navigation panel, which in this case is showing us the map information. So. We can start by creating a new project. So let's open a uh, network project and see what I got here. Uh, let's create a new project, call it Project Netcom, which then has zero elements inside. And then let's say that from now on, we are gonna design a network and I want all the elements to be part of the Netcom project, very good. So then, I have here uh, the map. We already have the customer location and the main path, and also the position of the NAP, or the network access point, where the drop cables for the customers will then start. Uh, so I can open the Rapid Network Planner, and then I decide that the planner will now work with the Netcom project, and I want it all materials should be part of a new project and let's start by showing you some automations that we can do so let's say that this is an underground network so i'm going to first define this manhole as my initial location where i'm going to place my cabinet with the splitters and then i will tell the system that i want to connect in this specific route these customers right here, as well as these two customers. So we can keep going with our planning and let's say that uh, in this specific route or main pipe, I want to connect these other customers and let's take just two more here so we don't waste time okay so 
once we define the locations that we want to connect, uh, we ask Connect Master to search for the business rules for each location. That's predefined, by the way, in the system library. So basically, in the library, we are going to define the rule set. So uh, what type of uh, distribution that should be used and how the, the rules should be applied. And then we enter in the rules. So here we, we are going to define what type of uh, panel or ODF or uh, end panel should be used for the customer and then drop cable type, how many fibers we should use. So we basically define those rules here in the library. And, and then all we need to do is just place the customer locations and the cabinet location and Connect Master will now automatically design all the rest for you. Find the right materials and do the project. And we can see that right now just by executing our project. So now the system is finding in the library the right duct type, uh, the right cable type, the right um, branching unit type that will be required. So, and we'll then generate the drawing for us for this network. So we can wait a little bit. All right, so this is the result we got here. All uh, sites have been connected. Uh, we can click and see the details. This is a two fiber cable. And we can see here all the cables. And the system not only calculates the cable, but also uh, what ducts needs to be used. And we'll then draw your network and bring some automation to the design stage. So now when we look at the project here, search project net call, we see this project has now 90 elements. And when we open the detail, we can say this is a, uh, new customer connections or infrastructure expansion. Uh, it's a planned project. We can insert more information here, who is the project leader and so on. Uh, this is gonna be important for uh, the project follow-up, but I wanna share with you the cost tab. So you see, uh, my network's gonna cost me $22,000. And I can see here a summary of materials, how many cassettes I'm gonna need, 20, how many drop cables I'm gonna need in here, the, the total length. But I can also see that in detail. So I see here the view of materials in detail, and then I can save it as an Excel file and so on. So, you know, we can really, from the planning stage here, uh, from our GIS, we can automatically generate all the view of material required for, for a new project. Then we can now add the operational costs and we can add some other costs as well. Okay, the idea of having this product management uh, module also in the software is that you're gonna be able to follow up your projects right here in the project scheduler. So I have one example here, which is uh, my project webinar and project webinar has some tasks which we can see here and we can really follow up the activities. So we we are planning the network and we define the steps and who is gonna be involved. And then we provide all the documentation for the network construction, as well as we follow up the implementation work. Very good. So now let's have a look to the inside plan capabilities that we have uh, in Connect Master. And then we have a look to the outside plant as well. So we get here what we call of Explorer menu. So we can open, this can be customized according to your needs. So in, in this example, I have the state, the city, and then the central office in my case here. We have the different location types, customers based on ethernet technology, customers based on FTTX net technology and so on, manholes and towers as well. So let's just start by looking at our central office, which is like a data center or my pop. And 
This pop has, uh, um, I have infrastructure in the fifth floor, which is a data center room. And I get here all the different network elements inside this specific data center room. Okay, if I wanna see on the map, I can right click and say show in current map. So then we can see exactly where we are. And by the way, I'm going to talk about that when we are in the outside plant portion, but this is map info that's being used uh, by Connect Master. And, and this is Bing Maps, but we also have Google Maps, OpenStreetMaps, and other mapping types. Okay, we can see that later. Okay, so th this is my pop. This is my pop, and this is the Empire State Building. It's a simulation network for our demo today. And I'm gonna open now the rack. So you see, we can see all elements that we have. We can also see uh, end device such as computer, IP phone, and so on. So let me open the one example here of a rack and see uh, what we can actually see. I can open the detail. So this is quite important. The, every component will have a detailed form like this and that each tab will tell you different information, a specific information about that component. So assembly tab will tell us the physical structure of a cabinet. So we see panels, um, we see the network elements, and here is where we can also add new components and manage the rack. So just by clicking the rack and opening its detail, I can come to the assembly tab and change the rack configuration. So let's suppose I wanna insert a new device right here. I can click. The system will take a look at this, the, the component library and will, will give me the options that can be installed in this specific rack, in this specific slot. We can really do um, a lot of consistencies in the database. So let's just, for example, say that I'm gonna install my Dell 6224 right here, okay? So then this is how we we create components and all that's now part of my project netcom. So not only the outside plant portion, but also inside plant will be considered as part of the project. All right, so we have here some network elements. So let me open one, switch, Cisco switch, we can see here the picture. So it has SFPs, slots, and so on. Uh, and so as I mentioned before, each component will have the detail, and this is the detail for an ethernet switch. Uh, it shares the assembly tab. Uh, it's a common tab uh, where you can actually deal with the physical configuration of the device. So, here we can add new interfaces. Uh, in this case, th these are SFPs that we can install in the Cisco switch. So here we basically change and we manage the physical configuration of a device, okay? Then I have this Mux Usage tab. This tab is gonna give me the logical information about this switch. So out of those physical ports, which one are active with services? and who are the customers being served by each one of these ports. So I see here that XFP1 has a 10 gigabit circuit that from my pop is going to the Chrysler building at the 26th floor, there is a telecom room, and then I'm connected to the Cisco switch at that location in XFP1, okay? Um, and I see the same here for the XFP2, where the, the, the circuit and where it is going to. So with that, I know that I have some ports that are physically inserted in the device, but they are not uh, being used currently. So if a customer needs to be connected, I could use one of these ports. Uh, besides that, we also have the IP and VLAN configuration available for network elements. So we can first define here what are, you know, the VLAN networks, the IP address, the IP subnets, and then we can freely assign those information here, you know, to the parts. So 
Connect Master will also help you to maintain all that logical information um, belonging to the active devices of your network. So also documents. So every uh, document related to the components can also be stored here, such as the contract that you have with your customer uh, or let, talking about components. In this case, it's a switch where we could insert here the installation handbook in this case it's a data sheet but uh, maintenance handbook so all information your technicians will need can also be attached here so uh, and also it's very common for instance the commissioning documents the documents produced during network commissioning can also be added to the inventory system so it makes easier for every area of your company to get access to that information. All right, so this is our friend, the Cisco switch, okay? So, and let's now have a look to the integration that we have with the um, Microsoft Physio. So we can open the detail and insert new devices in the rack. And when we want to have a schematic view, we just right click schematic, make drawing and we can just make a simple drawing of the front side or a more complex drawing, including the front and the back side of the rack. But let's do it, this first portion here. So I'm gonna draw. So right now you can see that Visio is open directly in Connect Master. So we, we have a very strong integration with Microsoft Visio. And you can see that the drawing is generated on, on the fly. And any change that we do here in the network element or in the rack will also be reflected here. When we generate the drawing, it will always be updated. So that's the concept. So you see, when we use Visio, that also gives us the flexibility to customize the stencils. So as you know, the vendors uh, many times they make these stencils available in their website. So we then use it to do some customization. So when you create a rack, you'll really see the realistic bay face of your uh, network element. And here, we can really see what are the active SFPs. So these are the SFPs with services. And these are SFPs that are uh, out of service right now, just inserted for future expansions. And we can also see uh, the free slots where we don't have any SFP right now. So all cards, all ports, and the services usage will be also reflected here in the your video drawing. And lastly, about Visio, uh, Visio is not only a way of uh, visualizing information in Connect Master, but also a way of um, searching or, or viewing the data uh, or interacting with the data. If you double click any component, you're going to have the details here. And then you can open the connections and you can do it directly from the Visio drawing. So whatever you see in the drawing, if you have questions about that component, you know, you don't need to find it here. Just double click directly on your visual drawing and you're gonna get the details. All right, so uh, the final topic about inside plan is the data center layout. So um, as you know, a data center is a combination of multiple racks and components. So uh, we can also track where those racks are out actually positioned inside your data center. So let's analyze drawings. And I get here my data center wrong layout. And we can open a copy of the drawing that will not generate a protocol. So this is also um, electronic uh, document management system. So uh, every documents and diagrams you're gonna have here uh, the list, the log of users who are editing, who are changing something in, in, in the document and so on. So let's open uh, the drawing. So this is like my data center layout. We can just see it here. And 
you can attach multiple drawings and so all the drawings that you currently have we can just include it and migrate it into connect master so you're gonna uh, manage the drawings directly in connect master and keep track of the log right which is quite important so and we are gonna have here the link between the explorer objects and the drawing so i can say show this rack in my drawing and it's going to position that rack in my floor layout so this is really important when you have a shared space uh, or if you are renting space in your data center and a company visits you you need to know where are the racks of that specific company so connect master will help you with that keep track of every rack and the same thing here if you double click a object here you're going to have the details so you can also navigate from the data center layout and see what is this specific component it's going to give you the details and then here gives you also other menus that you can use okay so uh, i think with that we cover the inside plant uh let me go to the outside plant and Let's see some nice functions. So for the outside plant here, we have uh, map info, as I mentioned before, integrated. And I can here show the controls. And map info, it's actually based on layers. Yeah, you know, many GIS systems are based on layers. So we can create layers depending on the objects that we have on our map so I get here a layer for manholes which I can turn on or turn off and then I will be able to see the manholes where they are right so this is also configurable and the customer can add new layers as they want and usually we have a set of layers for the planet network in a set of layers for the as network so you can design your networks and that will not be part of your ISPUT network. So you do that in independent layers. That's also possible in Connect Master. Okay, so now we see the layers. Um, I mentioned before that we are using here Bing Maps, but uh, we also have Google Maps available. In every mapping type here, we'll have uh, different imagery types so this is google and how google sees manhattan and then we, we get aerial or the hybrid view which is basically brings you the aerial view plus the street names and another option would be open street map so you know the one thing i like about open street maps is that your technicians will be able to find the near restaurants and hotels if needed right so this is uh one of the features of open street maps uh but depending on the region especially here i like to work in new york with Bing maps which for me it's the map that brings uh, the best definition okay um now we can see here that uh, we have the trench the ducts and the optical uh, and the very same commands we have from the explorer will also appear here on our map so we can click on a cable for instance and open the detail right but just before we do that i would like to show you how we manage the duct so i can open a duct and we are gonna have here the duct color diameters and so on and when we open the structure we can see here the cables or the structure of my duct. In this case, it's like a top duct, which is uh, the color is gray. And it has three inner ducts. Uh, and one is the blue, orange, and the green. And the blue brings the 48 fiber cables inside. Okay, then we can also control the diameters here. All right, so then we see uh, the duct link and so on all that information also it's managed here where the duct starts and ends so we got lots of details about our duct and can also attach pictures here okay uh, just before i show you cables and, and the, the level of information that we can get from the cable 
Um, let me quickly comment on how we need to have trains and ducts because these are also part of our view of materials, right? When we build a network, there's there's going to be costs um, to dig the trains. So uh, that should also be part of your uh, project uh, cost. So that's why it's important also to manage the trains and the duct. And let me show you what we can do for a manhole here. So I'm going to... I can show in the Explorer. So this is my manhole number three. And manhole number three has a vault. And I can see here the trains that are approaching the ducts. And I can open the structures and see uh, the cables that are approaching this specific vault. And I can open the detail of my vault, which is, in this case, is basically the, the manhole inside. And uh, we can see here the walls. This is what I would like to show you. So uh, here we can have more details about uh, this specific vault. So let me just uh, quickly show it in, ex in the, the map, in our map. So you see there are one, one duct or cable going to this direction, one going up north. And we can see that here, when we see the details, we can see that's exactly what we see here. We see, uh, we can attach the photos as well. So you see, this is, this is the photo of my manhole. And this is uh, the trench with the duct and the cable. We can see it from here. But this is going to this direction. This is going up north. And we can also hear see where that manhole is. So this kind of uh, details, you can also keep track of your uh, outside plant infrastructure. And you're going to have a lot of different reports here, whenever you see the printer. And manhole walls, it's a good one that will tell you the structure for this manhole. And you're going to have also here the details on the installation and how the cables are installed on that manhole. Very good, let's then uh, proceed to the next topic here. I'm gonna open the detail of this cable. And we can see here the slack. We also manage all the coils and slacks uh, in the cable. So that we do that here in cable segments. So we know exactly where we have access lengths. Uh, we also manage the wires and fibers, so how fibers are included in that specific uh, cable. So we can open and have a look to it. And here we also see colors and we see the, the fiber type and attenuation values. These attenuation values are quite important for the calculation of the power budget, obstacle power budget for your network. And we see connections for this specific portion of cable. So. We see that this cable leaves here my basement in my pop and it goes to my manhole five. Uh, we can then see this cable in the map if we want. So we see that it starts here and it goes up to here, which is where is my manhole five. So then let me close this operations here. So here in the detail, I know that fiber one is connected to my cassette number one in part one of my ODF, which is my telecom room in the basement. And I also know that fiber one is connected to the tray one in my enclosure here in this manhole, right? If I want to know um, the end connections or the end points um, oh, after my ODF here, where is this fiber actually going to? What is the final? Um, connection points of destination, I could change the physical path. And this is going to give me uh, both end sides for my, for the circuit that is actually running in fiber one. So I see that XFP1 uh, mm -hmm. in my switch 3560 in my rack. And then I see all the details in my data center room, 50 floor and so on. And this circuit it starts in this component, it goes up to the Chrysler building, and then I got here also the network element that is actually terminating my circuit. So what uh, 
is in between these two uh, locations, right? These two components. We can also see then the details. And now we are looking to the details of a physical path of a specific link. And we know exactly where the link starts, the ODF position, the fiber, the location, the components, and the connection points. We know all these details. And this is the, the circuit, right, that is coming from my pop, which is here and going to a specific customer. So I can see it on the map, so I can locate my customer, which in this case is right here. This is my customer. So the circuit leaves my pop and goes up to here. And so I can see the details in a tabular way, or I can generate a visual drawing for my circuit as well. So if let's suppose there is a, you know, a problem with this circuit and you need to quickly know how the circuit is established on your, on your network, you're gonna be able to see it right here. So this is the port, this is the location, component type, this is the ODF port, the fiber number. So it's, it's in a single page, you can have all the details of your circuit. Okay. Uh, and some other features are also available for the physical path. The, the drawing is one of them, but uh, we can also see uh, here, for instance, the OTDR function. So uh, this function works on the manual way, but also integrated with um, some Expo and other vendors uh, OTDR solutions. So let's suppose that there is a fiber cut. Uh, I know that the total link has 1,490 1, meters, but we also work with feet. It's just changing the library. Let's suppose that the, the fiber break is 854. So we just insert that here and Connect Master will tell us where that fiber break is, right? And we just found that the fiber break is in the manhole and it's gonna give you the maintenance report with the coordinates with the closest location to the fiber break point the fiber the component that was connected to the fiber before we start the measurement and the map so this you can from here send directly uh, by email to your technicians and so they will start the repair works right uh, we can also see what are the customers and services affected by this fault just by clicking here in impact analyze impact analyzer this is the tool that helps you to simulate failure so we see here the circuits that are going to be affected capacity and the effects so you can also simulate failures for any component directly from the Explorer and you're gonna have that type of list. Uh, so this is what we can do on a circuit level basis. Um, I just wanna show you quickly here uh, what is the case. I think we have just a few more minutes before we finish, but I wanna share with you an example of uh, a GPO network. So the same, I got a cable here and the difference with g is that it's a point-to-moot-point uh, technology. It's not a point-to-point -point technology. So Connect Master support both. So we can see here, when you are dealing with a point-to-moot-point um, technology, you're gonna have the multiple destinations up here. And as you click on a specific destination, in this case, for instance, my customer, uh, which has a name of customer seven in this case, so, and then I see the circuit details here, right? And we can also uh, look at, for instance, let's see uh, where my customer seven is. I just click here and it's it highlighted me that customer seven is right here. So we can then see what is the expected power budget for customer seven. So we click here and then we can see what frequencies do I want to use so 14, 19 nanometers, 1550, and we can see here uh, the actual attenuation curve. 
and you also see it, see it here in a tabular way so it's going to be minus 11.26 for 14 nano, 19 nanometers and 15.50 for this one here so see as you design your network or you as you connect your networks this kind of information will be automatically uh, done and calculated and also we can have good drawings so let me show you one drawing for a GPON network so this really gives you an end-to-end -end view of your circuit we, we saw that for a point-to-point -point path so we could see that uh, the connections and this is the same information but now we see for a point-to-mode point technology so uh, it leaves my ONT, it takes fiber one of my drop cable, and in this case, my customer number 12 goes to port number six, and then I can track connections back to my data center and even see here the port where my component is connected. So we have really end-to-end -end circuit view from inside paint running through all the outside plant components up to your customer destination all right so now just two more topics before we finish i just want to share with you uh the splice plan diagram so let me show in explorer right here so this is like a splice enclosure where we have trays and the trays will have fibers we can open connection sheet and see how fibers are connected. Uh, we can print reports. So there is this uh, splice plan report, which, which is a quite good one. We can um, generate a um, splice report where we see where the cable is coming from, the ducts that is being used in case this is an underground network, cable name, fibers, how the fibers are connected. So that will be provided by Connect Master as a report and also the drawing. So let me come here and say analyze splice plan. We can also see a nice visual drawing. So draw a splice plan. And we can even change how we would like to see the cables in our drawing. So let's say this should come from west, this should go to the east and and so on what i would like to see in my diagram if i want to see fires if i want to see the services so then i hit the draw and another visual you know window will open in connect master and you're going to see now the so you see the circuit you see the fiber and how this is connected okay all right, so now to finish our demo, I'm sorry, I, I know that we passed a little bit our our planet time, but anyway, I'm gonna just quickly show you here their outer routing capability, which I think it's really nice. So, uh, and the results that we can have with that. So let's suppose I wanna find the shortest route to activate a new customer. So I can click on my pop here and say, search start. And I can go up to my customer location and then click on search and so now we can um, between these two locations do I want to search for ducts available ducts so then I can insert new cables or I want to search for available cable routes or if I already have fibers connecting these two locations or even if I have a logical circuit connecting this location. So we can, you know, search for different resources. Let's just do the cable. So if I want to find the shortest route between these two locations, I will optimize it by length. And that will give me one result. And I can see it on the map. So this is the shortest path connecting this location to this to my pop okay so in operation tab 
And we can also see here how many fiber I have per segment and the number of free fibers per segment. So that helps me to define or decide if I'm gonna use this route or not. So if I don't optimize, the system can bring me a lot of different ways that those two sites can be connected. In my case, I have six ways uh, because we have multiple floors and the system also calculates for uh, cables that are approaching different floors. So now let's take one here, which is this way number four, which comes from my data center to the telecom room. And this, I believe, is the, sh the longest path. So let's see, it's uh, 5,000 meters. So comes from here, going up here and going up to here. So this is another route. And again, we can see here how many fibers we have per segment and how the fibers are being used. If we want to see a complete plan or fiber plan for this routes for this entire route from your the ODF at your data center to the ODF at your customer location or at your end location, you have the option to click and draw fiber plan. And another visual window will open then. And this really is gonna look at every enclosure that we have in that specific route. And it's also gonna consider the ODF at um, the inside plant in both locations and also the cable types, how fibers are connected, how fibers are spliced. So it gives you a very um, good diagram in terms of details. And you can freely define um, any two different locations and the Connect Master will tell you the, the best routes, the, the options that you have to provide connectivity along the chosen path. And so here we, we get this fiber plan diagram. Takes a little while considering the amount of information, but for sure doing this manually is really much harder than waiting for the diagram. So we get here, the path name, location where the circuit starts, and we can then see how it is connected all the way. Going in the circuit, you see this is the manhole 13. We get a splice enclosure there, and we get these cables connected and so on. And so it produces you the fiber plan for any selected routes that you would like to see connectivity. This is the fiber plan. We also have the ductive plan. We also have the, the cable plan. But let's um, see that in another uh, session, as well as let's have another session to also talk about the logical resource, because here we focus on the physical resource. But all these um, uh, WDM technologies, Sonnet technologies, and so on can also be supported in Connect Master. Okay, so thank you very much for your time, for your patience. Um, I hope you like it, our uh, demonstration, what we show with you today. Um, I'm gonna now share my contact information. So if you need anything or any information, you can feel free to reach us out and, and contact us for, for more details. Okay, so this is my email and netcon LLC space in Miami, US. So thank you very much and I hope you have a great day.